Good evening and thanks so much for joining us tonight. I'm Sophie Erber. Parents across the country this evening could soon receive monthly checks to help cover the cost of living during the pandemic and beyond. There is bipartisan support around this idea, but differing plans to make it all happen. Our Washington correspondent Jesse Tenner reports now in our top story at five. That's how we help lift four million children out of poverty in our country. Democrats agree it's time to change the child tax credit by boosting the amount and making it a monthly payment to parents. But they still have different approaches. We're not just throwing money at a, 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 a situation, but we are looking at enduring transformational change. Connecticut Congresswoman Rosa DeLauro's plan would make an increase permanent. It would send working and non-working parents $3,600 total a year per child under the age of six and $3,000 per child between six and 17 years old. All of this can set people on a path to economic security. Those amounts would go to couples making less than $180,000 a year or $130,000 for single parents. We welcome everyone to the debate. Other Democratic plans start phasing out the benefits sooner and make it temporary. And that includes a proposal from the Biden administration. It's a central priority of his first legislative proposal to cut child poverty. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki says President Biden included a child tax credit change in his COVID-19 relief package to send monthly checks to families for one year. That's again emergency funding and something that will help people get through this period of time. Republican Senator Mitt Romney also released a plan to give parents even larger monthly checks on a more permanent basis. But opponents of these proposals warn they would discourage unemployed parents from trying to find a job. In Washington, I'm Jesse Tenor. Turning our attention now to the latest COVID-19 numbers here in Siouxland, Woodbury County Health reporting eight new cases in 24 hours. Woodbury's current 14-day positivity rate stands at 7%. In Nebraska, Dakota County with new positive tests reported today and small number there. The county has a seven day positivity rate of roughly 4%. So good news. And in South Dakota, Clay County now reports 15 total fatalities. The weekly positivity rate stands for about 5% in Clay County. While the governor relaxed COVID-19 requirements in Iowa over the weekend, the Sioux City Diocese is not making any changes. Iowa's governor, Kim Reynolds, signed a new public health measure on Friday officially that relaxed existing public measures. The diocese says they will still be requiring masks during mass and will be blocking off every other pew. The diocese covers roughly 24 counties in northwest Iowa. And the global pandemic has led to more Iowans to hit the water and try their luck at fishing in 2020. This is a nationwide trend. Fishing licenses were up 24% in 2020. That was reversing a downward trend from the past decade. The Iowa DNR is selling more than 430,000 licenses last year. That generated roughly $37 million in revenue. The unexpected boost in license sales will allow the DNR to stock even more fish in our lakes and ponds. The Iowa State Patrol tonight says they're seeing a dangerous new driving trend that could put children's lives at risk. The State Patrol says there has been an increase in people ignoring those school bus stop arms. Many districts have installed cameras now to help law enforcement find those drivers who don't obey the law. In Polk County, there were 74 failure to stops for school bus convictions in 2018. Troopers say not obeying the law can be a life or death matter. When you see these flashing lights, you just need to simply obey those laws. And it's, it's no different than if you had a traffic light at an intersection. You need to obey that traffic control device and simply just stop and remember that safety is paramount and we need to make sure that we take care of our children and we take care of those people that are boarding and, and disboarding those buses. The minimum fine for illegally passing a stopped school bus is at least $250 per infraction. And the state can also suspend your license. The city of Sioux City will take another step forward tonight toward the construction of a new jail, and it's all at their council meeting deciding today. The council will take action on a bid that would allow them to purchase property that's located at 3701 28th Street to build the new Woodbury County Law Enforcement Center. The item has been deferred three times in the last two months. Last year, voters approved the $50 million project. Construction of a new jail expected to be complete sometime in 2022.
Well, it's time tonight for our first check on the weather. Another headline this evening, meteorologist Marcus Beasley standing by Marcus Sulan today, waking up to sub-zero temperatures for some of us, uh, others lingering in those single-digit <laughs> uncomfortable temperatures. That's right. If you're not below zero right now, you're very, very close to it as temperatures have not warmed up really much at all today. A high temperature of a sweltering four degrees in Sioux City and Wayne today as well as Cherokee. Zero degrees for your high temperature in Storm Lake. Three in Spencer, one in Carroll and Denison as well as Orange City. Esterville staying below zero all day long. And if you did warm up above zero today, well, unfortunately, you'll drop down below that tonight as temperatures will drop down into the negative teens. It is going to be extremely cold tonight, and unfortunately, it looks like we might see temperatures even colder this week. I'll have more details on that in the 9 on 9 forecast. Sophie? Stay tuned and bundle up. Thanks, Marcus. Well, garbage and recycling pickup in Sioux City being delayed thanks to this frigid weather. The cold temperatures causing Gill hauling trucks to experience problems with their hydraulic equipment. Residents being asked now to still set out their garbage and recycling containers like normal, but are warned there might be delays this week. Any containers should remain on curbside until emptied. Gill hauling plans on sticking to a close to normal schedule, they say as possible. Sioux City looking into changing its policy on snow emergencies also at tonight's city council meeting. This ordinance would automatically declare a snow emergency, but only when it snows more than two inches in a 24-hour time period. Currently, the city is required to declare a snow emergency for each event in order to enforce parking on emergency snow routes. Now, these routes need to be kept clear to maintain emergency services. Drivers who park on those routes do face fines, or some could have their vehicles towed. And as the temperature drops further, the number of home fires rise every year. During winter months, home fires become even more common as people are more likely to use unsafe heating supplements to keep warm. South Sioux City fire officials tell us it is common for people to overlook things like working smoke alarms and unintended heat supplements like a space heater that could easily spark a flame. Coming up tonight at 10, KCAU 9's Lydia Vasquez explains what to keep in mind to prevent a fire from happening in your home this winter. We have a lot of safety tips to keep in mind during these cold winter months and one of them tonight is if you have a pet. All pets need at least a little bit of exercise and of course they have to go to the bathroom but leaving them out for too long can damage their skin and their paws. They can also get hypothermia or frostbite just like you can and just as quickly. Veterinarian Kelly Locke says if your pet gets either it can often lead to an amputation. The most commonly affected parts are their tails, paws, legs, and ears. If it's too cold for us to be outside, it's too cold for your pets to be outside. The paws, they can also get um, basically cracked and start bleeding just because of the dryness, the salt going in and out of the heat and cold, um, and also with frostbite. So. If your dog does happen to stay in the cold for longer than anticipated, warm up a towel in your dryer and maybe wrap it around them. Other ways to help if you start seeing signs of frostbite or hypothermia in your pet. Professionals say take them immediately to a local vet. Lawyers for former President Donald Trump tonight blasting the impeachment case against him as an act of quote political theater. In a brief filed on the eve of the Senate impeachment trial, lawyers for Donald Trump attacking the case on multiple grounds they say it was unconstitutional and must be dismissed. Now Trump's historic second impeachment trial set to begin tomorrow officially with a debate and then a vote on whether it's even constitutional to prosecute a former president now that he's no longer in office. Democrats want to hold the former president accountable for the violent U.S. Capitol siege back on January 6th. And we now know a price tag for the National Guard troops sent to secure Washington, D.C. in the aftermath of that riot at the Capitol. The Department of Defense tonight says it will end up costing the United States nearly $500 million. The Guard deployment brought troops in from all 50 states and four U.S. territories as law enforcement agencies locked down the Capitol area for the inauguration of President Joe Biden. More than 20,000 National Guard troops were positioned across that city to block traffic and protect lawmakers and local landmarks. Officials say that money expected to cover the costs of nearly 7,000 troops that remain in D.C. They're scheduled to be there through mid-March. Well, online scams, we have a warning tonight from the BBB that digital criminals are getting more creative than ever before. What to look out for coming up.
And extremely cold and quiet weather overnight tonight. More light snow possible throughout the week, and there's really not much warmth in sight. I'll have details on all of that after the break. You're watching KCAU 9 News with Sophie Erber and meteorologist Marcus Beasley. This is KCAU 9 News at 5. To the negative teens, wind chill values more than likely 20 degrees below zero there for this weekend. It looks like a high of zero on Sunday, Monday, negative one for your high temperature. And then finally warming up next week back to 12 degrees. This is a picture right here sent to us from Mike <laughs> in Marcus, Iowa at the baseball field there. A little bit too cold for baseball. I don't think anyone wants to play any <laughs> sports outside with this cold weather. And if you have a picture for us, go to SiouxLandProud.com, click on the weather tab, then click on send us your photos and upload a picture to our gallery there. We'll pick a few to show on our newscasts. Maybe good weather for racing sled dogs, but that's just about it. I think it's great <laughs> weather to stay inside. I agree. <laughs> all right, thanks a lot, Marcus. Well, a middle schooler tonight, inspiring change all the way out in Washington, D.C. What she's trying to do for the hearing impaired community coming up. But first, scammers getting creative with their online targets. We'll explain what to look out for coming up. Don't go away. Over 50 years ago, Ron and Donna Harris took a Morningside Avenue shop and turns it into a home for their business, their family, and many friends. On this week's Siouxland Stories, I'll talk with them about their memories and what's next. Siouxland Stories, Thursday on KCAU 9 News. Welcome back. The Better Business Bureau says these are no ordinary scams. You've got to be on your toes or be armed with the information we're going to give you right now. So here's how many of the current employment scams work. They typically involve a job applicant who answered an online ad, was interviewed, and then offered the job. They will send you a check and they'll say, hey, go get yourself set up by a computer and that this and that and the other thing. We're going to send you a check for that. And then, oh gosh, it was we aired and we sent it for $1,000 more. We need you to wire that $1,000 back to us. And the check that they sent you was from a stolen organization. So then what happens is you're out that money. According to the Better Business Bureau, among those who have fallen for a scam, the biggest motivating factors were the flexibility to work from home, next was a higher salary, and third, more flexible hours. There are more work from home scams than there are legitimate work from home opportunities, even in COVID. I, I could feel very confident saying that. According to the 2020 Better Business Bureau Employment Scams Report, those between the ages of 45 and 54 lose the most money. They end up sending scammers about $1,600. And sorry, guys, we end up falling for employment scams more often and sending them more money than women. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us or to law enforcement or somebody that can really help you determine if it's a legitimate opportunity or not. In job postings, the most impersonated employer was Amazon, followed by Walmart. 65% were related to shipping jobs or warehouse coordinator positions. Well, change can be inspired by anyone at any age, and a young girl is proving just that in her fight to help those in the hearing impaired community. We'll explain next. Stay with us. An 11-year-old girl is inspiring legislation tonight in our nation's capital. It's aimed at helping people who face hearing problems. The bill still has a way to go before it reaches President Biden's desk, but it's already getting plenty of support. Ashley Michaels explains why. We saw her sweet smiling face and she was so beautiful. Little Allie was born 11 years ago, a day that changed this family's life forever. I'm, crying. I'm not going to cry. Because this isn't a sad story. So when they brought Allie over, her right ear was gone. It was gone. Allie was diagnosed with microsia atresia, which is the long way to say she can't hear naturally on her right side. Just before her first birthday, she got a device called a Baja, which uses vibrations to help her hear. Not always are traditional air conduction hearing aids able to help those types of hearing loss, but these are. But here's the thing. And another difference is, and this is a big one, <laughs> is um, the cost. Traditional hearing aids are available over the counter. These devices range between five and twelve thousand dollars each, and that's not even including the surgery. And she says most insurance companies won't cover those costs. It just, it's so so disappointing that um, children and adults are being denied. Soon, though, that could change, all thanks to a third grade homework assignment. One was write a letter to an elected official about a cause you believe in. 
And so when we were going through the letter, Allie looked at me and she said, Mom, my Baja. Congressman Joe Naguse took her idea to Capitol Hill, calling it Allie's Act to increase access to specialized hearing devices. It would mean the world to us. Remember you said you wanted to help other kids hear? This, this would help them hear. Yeah, you can give a thumbs up for that. Two thumbs, in fact, from the little girl now inspiring very big things. She's excited. We wrote the letter, but she, she has no idea how important this bill is and how much of a change. It would change so many people's lives. Taking a live look outside right now at sunset, Marcus returns with one more check on our forecast. Stay with us. Before we wrap up here at 5, let's check in first with Tim for what's coming up at 6. Hi, Tim. Hey, good afternoon, Sophie. A third person charged in that New Year's Day shooting here in Sioux City is pleading not guilty to the charges. 18-year-old Anthony Bauer faces first-degree murder and several other charges. We'll take a closer look at his case coming up tonight. That's at 6 o'clock. Also, an associate professor of biology at the University of South Dakota his skills to new use. Find out what a team consisting of himself, his wife, public health workers, mathematicians, and some others are doing, working all during the pandemic. Also coming up after World News tonight, two brothers are showing their appreciation for mail carriers. Find out how the act of kindness was inspired by a seasonal song and how the carrier reacted to all of that goodness. That's coming up at 6. Carriers, of course, earning every dollar they make in these cold weeks. And one other note, Iowa State fans with some good news today. Football coach Matt Campbell signing an extension with Iowa State through 2028. Jake has the details on that as well. Coming up. Good news there, Tim. I know a lot of people uh, happy statewide tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, not so happy about our forecast. <laughs> yeah, really, really cold out there, and it looks like that's going to continue. Overnight tonight, wind chill advisories for much of Siouxland in effect from 9 o'clock tonight until 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. So bundle up if you have to head outside tonight. All right, thanks, Marcus, and thank you for joining us. We'll see you back here at 6, and until then, have a great night.